let us discuss first fundamental theorem of calculus okay so let us discuss its statement first f is continuous so what we have we have a small f which is continuous on closed interval a b so let us write that thing first we have we have what we have f is continuous on closed interval a b after that what they say they define capital f okay which is the integration of small f so let us write and capital f of x which is equal to integration a to x f of t dt what is x here x is any point which lies between a and b okay and what we have to prove if capital if small f is continuous and capital f is a integration of small f they say it's then capital f is anti derivative of small f anti derivative means exactly opposite to derivative or you can say integration capital f is integration of small f or you can say uh, small f is derivative of capital x you know that derivative and integration exactly opposite to each other so the same thing we have so this thing we have to prove let us write that thing to prove that capital f dash is equal to small f on closed interval a b this thing we have to prove what will i do i am going to take one h for h is not equal to 0 that h should be non zero such that i should mention such that x and x plus h lie in closed interval a b so what i am doing i am doing i am selecting one h which is non zero such that x and x plus h x plus h both both of them should lie in closed interval a b okay then what will happen let me write then capital f of x plus h will you tell me what will be its value capital f of x is this one so now we have to find capital f of x plus h that means simply we have to replace x by x plus h so see here we have x so i will replace it by x plus h so we are we will have the value of this one so integration a to x plus h f of t dt remaining part will be same right then then i will subtract f of x plus h minus f of x so what will happen let us subtract f of x plus h is that one let me put that value here integration a to x plus h f of t dt i am going to subtract integration a to x f of t dt okay i put values of both functions f of x plus h as well as f of x so we have to solve it further but we don't have any space there so make a screenshot of it first then we will go further let us continue after that what will happen there is minus sign as you can see here let me write that thing the same thing f of x plus h minus f of x is equal to so see you know that when we remove minus sign we need to change the limits i will do the same thing here so integration a to x plus h f of t dt i am going to write here plus so because of that minus sign we have removed so sign will get changed limits will get changed x to a f of t dt right so this is nothing but integration a to x plus h f of t dt okay see what will i do let me write it first just a minute what will i do i will write that integral first to so integration x to a f of t dt plus integration a to x plus h f of t dt simply i interchange the integration nothing else so as you can see here integration x to a and again a to x plus h that means whatever the upper limit of this integral is same as the lower limit of second integral so that's why we can write so this is equal to integration x to x plus h f of t dt okay so now we have got value of this one is equal to this integral i am going to divide both sides by h it is possible since h is not equal to 0 so let us divide both sides by h so f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is equal to here we will have 1 by h integration x to x plus h f of t 
dt i will call it as this is equation number one it's very important equation okay it plays a very significant role in our proof see please note down this equation number one we are going to use it later let us go further what we have here we have some space let us use here h is not equal to zero obviously this thing we have assumed initially so if any number is not zero not equal to zero then either it is positive or negative so therefore h is greater than zero or h is less than zero so out of these two conditions i will assume h is greater than zero if it is less than zero then also we can prove getting by the same technique or by the same procedure but here without loss of generality i am assuming h is greater than zero i will mention without loss of generality consider consider h is greater than zero getting so that means h is here also in diagram also we have shown the same so x is here x plus h is here so see therefore we can write f is continuous on x to x plus h since we know that function f is continuous on closed interval a b and x to x plus h is a subset of closed interval a b so that's why obviously it is continuous on this interval also x to x plus h so we can apply extreme value theorem so therefore we can write therefore by extreme value theorem by extreme value theorem what can we write by extreme value theorem function has maximum value and function has minimum value so therefore extreme value theorem there exist u and v belongs to x to x plus h such that f of u is equal to small m which is minimum minima and okay let me remove this one and f of v f of v is equal to capital f which is maxima maxima as you can see here function has a minimum value okay so here we have a function minimum value small m and here the function has a maximum value capital m right so small m is achieved at point u so here is some point v, u where function has a minimum value and there is some point v where the function has maximum value as you can see in this diagram getting so in this domain x to x plus h function has a minimum value at point u we call it as small m and a function has a maximum value at point v we call it as capital m okay so this is a very important thing we have got make a screenshot of it then we will go further okay so see therefore i can write clearly clearly small m is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to capital M okay see for uh, I should write here t for all t belongs to closed interval x to x plus h as we have written small m is a minimum value capital M is a maximum value so obviously the function will lie between small m and capital M after that what will I do I'm going to integrate all sides we have a three sides I'm going to integrate with respect to t with limits x to x plus h let us do so see m integration x to x plus h dt less than or equal to integration x to x plus h f of t dt here also i will do same integration x to x plus h capital m dt but as you know small m is a constant it will come outside small m is constant it will come outside what is the integration of dt it's t x to x plus h here less than or equal to integration x to x plus h f of t dt on this side also same thing will happen capital m is a constant will come outside right integration of dt is t with limits x to x plus h right as you know first we put upper limit after that we put lower limit if i put upper limit x plus h minus x x will get cancelled and we will have h only so therefore small m h less than or equal to integration x to x plus h f of t dt here also same thing will happen if i put upper limit x plus h if i put lower limit x x minus x will get cancelled and we will have h only so capital m h let us divide both sides by h so therefore h h will get cancelled 
less than or equal to 1 by h integration x to x plus h f of t dt less than or equal to capital M. So the same integration we had got in equation number one as you can you can go back and see. Okay, so the same equation we have got. So from equation number one, what can we say, right? From one, we can write, let me write here, small m is less than or equal to, okay, what was its value in one equation one we had got? Its value was f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h less than or equal to capital M. But you remember, small m is nothing but f of u since small m is an image of u so therefore i can write this is f of u less than or equal to f of x plus h minus sorry this is capital f of x divided by h less than or equal to capital m is an image of small v so therefore capital m is nothing but f of v after that i am going to take a limit h tends to zero let us take so therefore limit h tends to 0 f of u less than or equal to limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h less than or equal to here also I will take limit limit h tends to 0 f of v. So see what will happen uh, let me remove this one it is not required okay just a minute huh okay so uh, there is no more space to write so make a screenshot of it first and then we will go further so here h is moving towards zero getting so x plus h as h will move towards zero x plus h will move towards x as you can see here u and v are sandwich between x and x plus h if x and x plus h will come together then obviously u and v which are between x and x plus h will also move towards x so therefore the same thing we can write in this way also so therefore limit uh, our u getting so u is moving towards x since h is moving towards 0 so obviously u will also move towards x f of u less than or equal to see this is nothing but derivative this is a definition of derivative so this is nothing but f dash of x less than or equal to limit what will happen here here also v will move towards x f of v so let us apply the limit that means simply we have to put x is equal to u there so we will have therefore f of uh, u is equal to x i am writing so less than or equal to capital f of x less than or equal to f of x so as you can see here this first and the last terms are same so that's why we will have equality so therefore f dash of x is equal to small f of x so there therefore what can we say we can say yes, small f is a derivative of capital F or you can say capital F is anti-derivative of small f. So in this way, we prove the theorem. Okay, so let me remove this one. It is not required. Okay, and you can make a screenshot of it. Thank you. Bye-bye.